So in today's web dev tip, we're going to take a look at an example folder structure that you could potentially use for your JavaScript projects. So we've got a simple repository that we've set up over previous tutorials, uh, but when you want to actually come and start write some code, you might want to actually structure your files and folders in such a way that everything is easy to find. And so there are two different ways to structure your JavaScript project, but both of them involve one specific folder. And this is going to be where you keep all of your source files. So the, the files that create the actual application or project that you're working on. And that's typically called SRC, but sometimes also called lib, which obviously is short for library. So either or is fine, but SRC or source is probably more typical. Now within your source folder, you're going to be having all of the source files for your project. And this is where you might differ in how you you actually structure your project but I would say the first thing you're probably going to have in there especially if it's a front-end project is something for your assets and when we say assets we're talking about things like maybe like images or fonts or potentially some CSS files but there are other places you could put those as well basically any static web content that you want to display so you would keep that in an assets folder now the next thing you're probably going to have in your source folder is an entry point so some way that the application can be uh, instantiated either in the browser or on the command line. And so this typically has a name like index, so it might be index.js or index.ts if it's a TypeScript file. And this will contain some kind of code to actually uh, bootstrap your application or get it started, depending on what your project actually is. So if your application is called my project, for example, you might create a new object based off of it. And then there might be another function to call on that to get things moving. It really depends on how you're setting things up. But that would be a typical index file and the purpose of it is just to get the application running in the browser. So we've got our assets and we've got our entry points into our application. What else do we put in our source folder? Well, this depends on which view you're going to be taking, but essentially you might have a folder in here which contains all of the components or pages or whatever it is your application is doing. So in here we might have all of the different bits and pieces that create our application. So if there was a login component, for example, or a login page, you might create another folder inside of there called login. And then there might be another one called register if you're registering users, for example. So these components all have specific uses and what the actual contents of these folder really depends on how you're constructing your app. If it was just pure JavaScript, for example, you might have a login page.js. But also there might be an equivalent HTML template that needs to be displayed as well. So we might have login page.html and that would be all of the markup that needs to be displayed uh, when this particular component is used. So the other approach I was mentioning is that inside of your components folder, you might not have individual subfolders for each of the components. They might all just be listed uh, in one folder here. So everything in this root components folder. And that's good if you've only got a few components that you need to list here. But if you do have multiple files that you need to group together, then it's worth considering putting them into their own subfolders. And that brings us nicely on to the point of testing as well. So it's also usual for a project to have a test suite to run against the code that you've got to ensure it's working okay. And if you've got this kind of components structure like this with each individual component in its folder, what you can do then is create another file inside of the component subfolder and put the spec files, which are the test files to run uh, inside of here. So when our test runner runs, it will look through the entire code base and find these files and run any tests that it finds inside there against the code and obviously report back if there are any problems. But what you might find in some projects is instead of these being in the source folder, in the root of the actual project, there is another folder called spec or potentially test as well, which will hold all of the tests for your project. So that's another approach that you can use as well, and you can move the spec files into the test folder as well. The same thing will happen when we run our test runner. All of the test files inside of that test folder will report back any errors that it finds when it runs against the code. I prefer the other approach where possible if you have the uh, components in their own subfolders and then all of the test files as well in there. It just makes things easier to import and you're grouping all of the related code together. So if you do need to make any changes to either the test files or the actual source files themselves, then they're all in one place and it's easy to find anything if you need to make a change. So there you go, there's just a way that you might structure your project. And of course, if you are using a framework tool like the Angular CLI or Create React App, 
they will do all of this hard work for you and they will structure everything in the way that they think is the best way to have it. But you'll see some familiar patterns when you use those tools. You'll see the source folder and you'll more than likely see all of the components uh, related files uh, grouped together in subfolders. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.